we're going to talk a little bit for a second about the next phase of finding domains. So we have looked at the cloud. We have looked at what IP space our target owns. We have looked at GitHub, but there's a whole bunch of other sites on the internet that gather information about URLs. And so they do it for different reasons. So some of them are search engines, right? Every search engine is grabbing every URL ever. There's a whole bunch of infrastructure websites that give inform information about websites like the Wayback Machine, Census, Netcraft, like Pass the Total, all these sites. There's all of these projects to categorize certificates like cert.sh and cert.db. And then there's a whole bunch of security sites too. So on the internet, there's about somewhere between 60 and 100 of these what we call sources of data that... As a hacker, we used to have to go and manually go to these sites and try to use some, you know, like Google Hacking Foo or um, or GitHub, you know, like we used there, using their search box and try to find everything they knew about our target. So we would ask every single one of these 60 to 100 sites, what do you know about NASA.gov, which is not time efficient. So we basically had like an advent about five or six years ago of some tooling that can do this for us. It'll reach out to all these APIs. And so um, one of the one of the tools to do this that I um, that I use heavily is a mass. And so a mass and another tool called Subfinder will go out to all of these places and find um, find references to our target. So in the slides I use twitch.tv, um, but we'll go we'll go live and I did a run on um, on NASA before the show. So if I go back to the top here and I will make this big once I get to the top. Okay, so I go here and I have a mass installed. Here's the command here for running a mass against NASA. So it's just a mass enum dash D NASA.gov. And then I've added a couple of flags here to say, I want to know where you found the reference to NASA.gov. Um, and I want it to be verbose, right? So I ran this, it's it's done running, but you can see it tells you right away where it's looking for subdomains for NASA.gov. And so uh, the sublister API, the chaos data set, DNS dumpster, hacker target, these are all websites online that, you know, Yahoo, all kinds of stuff, right? And so it tells me that it's going to look at all these places and then it starts giving me back data. So it found a reference to NASA.gov, uh, URS earth data.nasa.gov from this website and this website. And so it it searches the entire collection of these sources to tell me more about NASA's websites. And so if I go down to the bottom here, I want to see if it's still running. It's still running. And I started this well before the show started, right? And so it takes a little while to run. This is one of the things I start right away when I do my recon because it does take a little while to run. And uh, yeah, it's it's, it's going to give me a whole bunch of more at-bats or chances to find stuff for, for NASA. So a mass is a giant tool set of uh, of recon tools. And uh, it's written by a guy named Jeff Foley. It's an amazing tool. You can find it on um, on GitHub at um, OWASP Amass, and then you can go here and check it out and uh, download it and use it yourself. I think one of the things about Amass is, is it's thorough. It's uh, It takes a long time to run because it's checking so many sources and it's doing a couple different techniques for finding sites for us. Now, if you want to do a quicker run of this same concept, there is a second tool written by a group called Project Discovery, um, which is called um, Subfinder. Um, so Subfinder is written by Project Discovery, and uh, and they scope their tool a little bit tighter, and so it's much faster. And so um, you can run Subfinder and get output for um, for any target in usually like anywhere between you know a minute and five minutes instead of you know I started a mass before the show started and it's still going right now. Um, and so in my testing, I use both of these tools and then I just cat the output to a single text file and then sort it and unique it. And so I will use both sources. Between the two of them, a mass and subfinder, they're the two best tools for finding subdomains from these sources online. And so uh, subfinder looks like uh, this. So if I go back to the run I did, just a couple seconds ago. Yeah, my question always for you, Jason, and I mean, you, I think you answered it last time, but yep. you can give us the, the 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 answer again is, you know, you get lost in the weeds here. How the heck do you know what's important yep. and what's just yep. know, stuff? Yeah, so the, the answer is not as fancy as people really want it to be, honestly. If I really want to hack NASA or Tesla or any of these big companies, right? Like every single one of these, like I said, is an opportunity. So there's no way to really just like give up on any one of them. Um, so... At the end of at the end of running Subfinder, it found like six thousand sites, right? So like, how do you get through six thousand sites? Well, 
there are some strategies. So the end part of all of this, when I finish running all these tools and everything in my checklist over here, right, I end up with a whole bunch of lists of subdomains. And I basically dump them all into a Redis database on, on my Linux box. And then I unique them. And then I take that. And so now it has all these tools output in this database. And then I tell it to print out all of the subdomains again. And then I use a tool to screenshot them. And so the tool we use for screenshotting is down here. It's called HTTPX, which is another project discovery tool. So project discovery is this amazing group of developers who write security tools, open source security tools. And um, they have been contributing to uh, the security scene for you know several years now. But um, they have many different tools, and HTTPX is another one. Subfinder is one. They have many different tools. But they are probably one of the biggest contributors and advents to the security scene as far as tooling goes since Nmap, I would say, uh, as far as like how how prevalent they are in our industry. So I will have a database of all of the subdomains, and then I will just feed them to their HTTPX tool. And let's see, let's see if I can do that here. So what I have a file of, uh, of uh, NASA stuff. So, okay, so uh, I will zoom in here. So I have a file of some of the output of this stuff, right? And I can just do cat, uh, let's see. See what's in here. I think it was, I called it two NASA or three NASA. Okay, cool. Yeah, three NASA. So here's an output, right? So now I have their tool HTTPX installed. And what this will do is remember, we're getting these subdomains from GitHub and from all these new places on the internet, but we don't know if they're live yet, right? And so normally what you would have to do is port scan these, but HTTPX, its base functionality, what it does is it just tells you, is there a website on this domain? So you can just cat all of your domains and pipe it right into HTTPX. And so this will tell you, yes, there is web servers live for all of these websites. So that's the first thing we need to do. We need to pare down our big data set to stuff that's live um, with websites on it, because we're going to attack websites. Um, and so this will go through and attempt to make a, a connection on port 80 and port 443 to all of those subdomains. Now, um, what you can also do with HTTPX um, is you can, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with HTTPX, but one of the cool things you can do about HTTPX is you can do screenshots. And let me find the flag for screenshotting here. So you can pass it SS and it will go to that website once it's live and take a screenshot. And so if we do that for our, our NASA stuff, it will begin screenshotting. Now this will take a while, right? It has to open a headless browser, go to the site, take a screenshot. But what this will allow us to do is it'll give us a folder with the name of the subdomain and a screenshot of the page it lands on. And so that is a way I can pare down this list a little bit. I'll get a folder of screenshots and I'll start looking at the screenshots and just be like, oh, that looks interesting. That looks interesting. That looks interesting. I'm going to hack those things first. Now, that doesn't mean I can skip any of the other sites because there might be vulnerabilities on the other sites. But screenshotting is a way that we can prioritize kind of our hacking a little bit, um, which sites we're going to choose to to look at first. So when I'm looking at those screenshots, what are you know what are things I'm looking at? Well, I'm looking at sites that you know basically look like they were written not with current generation frameworks that don't have very good CSS and styling, right? That indicates to me that, you know, they were probably not really paid attention to a lot, probably haven't a lot of, haven't had a lot of security love. And so I will definitely look at things like that. I will also look at the name of the subdomain. So we talked about this in the last show, right? But if I look at some of these subdomains, I can see that this one is get earthdatanasa.gov, right? Now, I don't really know what this is, right? But anything that's a Git server, I want to look at because it might contain source code. Anything that has like dev or engineering in it, I want to look at because, you know, might have developer information in it. Uh, I want to look at their their verbatim API because definitely want to check that out. Because I'm a nerd, I want to check out JPL, right? So that's right here, right? So uh, <laughs> yeah, so there's there's a lot of things like you just gain over time, like through hacker intuition is like, what do I want to look at? And it's either visually through the screenshot or through the name of the subdomain usually. Um, but you can't skip anything. I mean, you really, you have to look at like almost everything. 